how to hope lessons from the Israelites, the Jews, and their messianic expectation. What a people. Part 32, Second Coming Chapel Sermon, or message number 247. And uh, Daniel Ezekiel, if you don't mind, we urgently need that cord for this mic. Also, if you don't mind jot, jotting down, finding the sermon when I predicted in this in this um, service four or five years ago that uh, we will one day be attacked, a war would break out between Russia, China, Iran, and America. This is message number 247, Psalm 72. Give the king thy judgments, O God, and thy righteousness unto the king's son. He shall judge thy people with righteousness, and thy poor with judgment. The mountains shall bring peace to the people. And that's what we're going to be talking about tonight, peace. The peace that comes with the, the Prince of Peace, his name is Jesus Christ. The mountains shall bring peace to the people, and the little hills by righteousness. I believe that all the true born-again Christians, and I really believe this with all of my heart, they love peace, they love quietness, they love order, because they have the Prince of Peace inside of them. I really believe that. Now, we all have our different personalities, but deep down, all of us who are truly born again like peace, quietness, and order. The mountains shall bring peace to the people, and the little hills by righteousness. He shall judge the poor of the people. He shall save the children of the needy, and shall break in pieces the oppressor. Now, you must understand that the Prince of Peace brings peace, but he will break you in pieces if you do evil. You have pieces or peace, a piece of you, uh, if uh, you don't confess your sins and repent and stop messing with God and stop dishonoring God and stop disrespecting God and stop messing with his people. Those of you who are being oppressed, mistreated, abused, hated because of your race, because you're a woman, because you are a child or whatever, I assure you, from the Word of God, from God Himself, because He said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. Sometimes it's best just to not say anything. Pray hard and let God do what he's going to do to the oppressors because he will break them in pieces. Don't you worry about a thing. They shall fear thee as long as the sun and moon endure throughout all generations. I don't know about you, dear friend, but I love peace and I don't care what it takes to bring peace. Thank God for uh, peace in the church in Fort Worth, Texas that many of you have already forgotten about. A devil appeared in the church with an AK-47 or whatever to bring unrest and to disturb the peace. There was an old FBI agent who just calmly pulled his gun out 
and brought peace back to the situation in a hurry very quickly we had peace again whatever either you were going to have peace or you will be in pieces like that man coming down to the ground with his with he with, with his his bad self thinking that he was bad he was going to shoot up some some church folks and as the old black saints used to say the devil is a lie see some of you dear Christians if you want peace uh, at, cost, uh, at any cost uh, in another way where you just let people just run all over the church and and mess over you and mess over your family and, and, and uh, abuse you and everything else you got people in your family who always want to keep some mess up somebody needs to step up one of the parents and make it very clear now you do what I tell you especially your grown children your teenagers you make it very clear and you deal with the situation I believe anybody living in your house can be chastised and rebuked and punished and you're gonna to have to do that if you want peace and it's not always about you having peace as the authority figure it's about other people in the family who are weaker than you are and they are who need peace and not only peace but order and fairness sometimes you got to break the peace to make peace some of you understand this some of you don't let's pray holy father god we praise you and we thank you for the gift of peace that you give us and that you give us the strength to fight for holy father god I praise you and thank you for the Prince of Peace uh, who knows how to bring about peace and uh, who knows how to break in pieces those who try to disturb the peace. Have mercy, Lord God, in heaven among us. And for Jesus Christ's sake, as your believing Christian, Lord, those who are sincere, as you talked about in the book of Ephesians, please forgive us of our failings and our sins, our disobedience, and Lord, uh, our faults. As we from our hearts, by your grace, forgive those who have sinned against us. For we all know who are born again that nothing will disturb the peace like sin putting ourselves in the way of sin, doing evil disturbs the peace, takes away the joy in our lives and takes away the order in our lives and not only that, when we commit certain sins such as sexual sins, and we allow devilish people to lay hands on, on us and we make contact physically in some way. Lord, uh, we know that a piece of that person will always be there. Uh, the demons can jump from one person to another. When we compromise ourselves and uh, commit ungodliness in your sight, have mercy and grace upon us. And for Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us of our sins and help us to repent. Help us to turn from our evil ways. Help us to pray. Help us to get back to you, our first love, because you first loved us. Help us to do it right and help us to do it with the quickness. For time is running out. We're moving forward. Away from the first coming to the second coming of yourself. Lord Jesus and we do some of us pray with John please come quickly it was bad back then it's worse now and the Holy Father God we pray before you come through the preaching of your Holy Gospel even from the wilderness 
Move, Lord, upon the hearts of people by your Holy Ghost power. Open blinded eyes and unstopped deaf ears and save lost souls. And Lord, uh, we thank you for Sister Lois Evans. And Lord, uh, let her know that we're coming. And uh, we are a little bit uh, envious of her to go before us, but uh, we pray that you'll help us to finish our course well, as well, as we look to the second coming of Christ. Or if you choose to take us another way, Lord, we look to that as well. But it's coming, time is winding down, and Lord, we pray that lost sinners would hear the gospel and instantaneously be saved. We pray for the revival of true Christians. We pray that, Lord, you would block the Judases in our families and in our lives. Lord, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, please cast out the devil and the demons of hell, the satanic demonic spirit of Judas, betrayal, and Sanballat, and Tobias, and Demas. Cast that spirit out of the lives of your people. And Lord, uh, we pray for those who are working hard, even in this building. And Lord, they are praying hard, they are thinking hard, they are working hard, they are consistent, they are faithful, they are tempted to get frustrated at people who don't do their job because they like peace and they like order. Help them to keep on going on whether others go with them or not. Encourage their hearts tonight through your holy word, help them to remember that this life will be over soon, that uh, we have the hope of your second coming, the blessed hope, the rapture of the church, it will be all over tonight. So Lord, help us to walk with our minds stayed on you, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Save those who are lost, revive those who are saved. Glorify your holy name, lift up your holy son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless every other meeting held on Saturday night, Lord, around the globe. And open blinded eyes, and we pray for millions. Above the three million we're praying for, be born again and saved tonight. In Iran, in Iraq, and uh, we welcome them tonight. In Israel, in Saudi Arabia, we thank you, Lord, for these crowds that if I went to their border, they wouldn't let me in with a Bible in my hand. But somehow through the Internet, Lord, we say a howdy to our Chinese brothers and sisters in the underground church. So many of them participate in these services down in the Philippines uh, in South Korea. I have not myself seen anybody in North Korea, though we only have one person, but I have not seen them myself. And Lord, in France and England, huge crowds. In uh, Kenya, in Nigeria, we thank you, Lord, for all of them. Have your holy gospel, the power of your Holy Spirit, impact their lives, that whatever they're listening on or watching on or looking at, they will get saved tonight. Glorify your holy name. Thank you for the staff here. What a blessing they have been. Thank you so much. Help them to see. Open their eyes and help them to see what a great impact they're having in the world. Uh, I know they will not truly see it all until they go up a little higher. But Lord, help them to see it uh, today. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and forsake. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Tim LaHaye. who is now home with the Lord. A 
great Bible teacher. In fact, one of the great Bible teachers that I used to listen to when I was a younger Christian, he was faithful, he was consistent, and he was very practical. But do you know he's in heaven now? He wandered on this earth, serving God from San Diego to Virginia, around the world, but he's home with the Lord. If you say one day you'll be home with the Lord in heaven, and uh, you need to prepare for that day, if you're not saved, you can be home with the Lord in heaven. I assure you, Tim LaHaye is saying, preach on, Brother Daniel, preach on. He served his generation and he left a lot behind. He really dealt with some serious issues. He had a unique way uh, to bring out the Holy Word of God and to help people. Dr. Tim LaHaye said, Bible prophecy helps us to better understand the future and realize the urgent need to spread the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It motivates us to personal purity, or it should. If you're thinking about doing evil tonight, and you name the name of Christ, Think about the second coming of Christ and the fact that Jesus could show up tonight in the rapture. You are not to be doing anything that you would be ashamed of if Jesus knocked on your door. But I have news for you. Jesus is already in your house. He's watching everything you do and everything you say in every attitude you display. <clears throat> and this gives us hope, the second coming of Christ, the blessed hope in a hopeless age. <coughs> this is the hope that Dr. Tim LaHaye had before he left and went home to be with the Lord. I am a firm believer that many Christians, modern day Christians, missing, they're missing out on rich encouragement. First, from not reading the Bible. Second, from not reading the old saints who have already gone through it. Some who are closer to us than the first church. Uh, it's provided uh, by the grace of God to encourage you in the faith. Dr. Dean Ulrich said between the two comings of Jesus, believers experience what is often called the tension between the already and uh, the not yet. And it is a rather weird tension. Jesus' followers can look back and see that D-Day, the decisive strike, has already occurred and now guarantees thorough defeat of the enemy. And I hope that you're on the team running the enemy to the Atlantic Sea. Atlantic Ocean. Nevertheless, the time after the first coming and before the second coming involves ongoing warfare. It involves ongoing warfare, and this is what many Christians do not like, so thus pops up the prosperity gospel, which is a lie not only to the rest of the world, not only to the rest of the real church, but even to the people 
who have propagated it. It's a lie out of hell. It's not real Christianity. And they know it. And, and some of them are telling the truth. I know one Pentecostal preacher who never bought into it. He tried to warn the people in as loving a way as he could without destroying everything. And we've always shown great respect for him because I, I, I've always believed he's a true believer and a true man of God. And God has blessed him. And some of the things he preaches and says is not my cup of tea, but I believe that he's a born-again preacher and he's, uh, he's getting folks saved and baptized and into the church. So we're in a world of ongoing warfare with the spiritual forces of darkness and their terrestrial supporters. Your biggest enemy is not your family member, but the devil behind your family member. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. The devil may use a family member or a friend. But he's the true enemy. V-Day has not yet arrived. And so the potential for setbacks and defeats, even, still exists. All too often, God's people succumb to temptation and score a victory for the enemies of God sad to say. Don't let the devil use you like that. If you can't be an encouragement, please shut up. If you can't help somebody along the way, you can't exhort somebody, even rebuke somebody so that they can be exhorted and encouraged in the faith, shut up. Still, the decisive strike at the first coming of Jesus guarantees ultimate victory at the second coming, and Jesus' followers fight the good fight of faith with assurance that God, who has begun a good work at the first coming of Jesus, will bring it to completion at the second coming. And may I add, as I've been preaching on in another series, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Now, beloved, in our last message, we continued looking at the hope that we have for the second coming based upon the covenant that God made with King David and the blessings he bestowed upon the kingdom of Israel and how it translates to the kingdom that is coming with King Jesus if you will the son of David but the king of kings and lord of lords the everlasting king Last week we saw that Jesus' reign will be a reign of righteousness. A reign of righteousness. And ladies and gentlemen, we talked about the importance of righteousness in a kingdom. There's no real kingdom without righteousness holiness, godliness, and uh, the king of kings will have it so. And Dr. David Guzik said, as God sends such a rich blessing, his people will flourish, and there will be an abundance of peace, shalom that will last beyond comprehension until the moon is no more. 
In a limited sense, this was true of Solomon. In the kingdom of Solomon, the son of David, through the influence of his great wisdom, good men were encouraged, righteousness flourished, and the land enjoyed tranquility, peace. If you have uh, ever heard me pray, you probably heard me pray something like this, Lord, grant us peace and joy and, tr and tranquility of mind. In a greater sense, it points to Jesus alone, the Prince of Peace. The connection between the righteous and the peace reminds us of Melchizedek, the one who was and is both the King of Righteousness and the King of Peace. And so last week we looked at righteousness. This week, secondly, we're looking at peace. Jesus' reign will be a reign of peace. When I was reading the passage to you, I pointed that out, how that peace is paramount. If one keeps up with the news today, it seems that the world is constantly on the brink of another world war. In fact, one newspaper reporter uh, mentioned that this past week. Or at least a second Cold War. While some of this is just fear-mongering and foolish talk, dangerous talk, the resurgence of Russia and China, and now Iran, the clashes with radical Islam, and the continuing tribalistic conflicts throughout the third world nation show that the future of the world is anything but peaceful without Christ. This is one of the reasons why Jesus Christ must come. For without him, there is no peace. There will be no peace. The Pope uh, obviously can't bring any peace. He slapped somebody just last week. The Dalai Lama can't do it. Joel Osteen with his wonderful and nice and sweet happy messages can't do it in fact if you have noticed things are getting worse and worse even where they are we need the Prince of Peace to come he's coming Jesus Christ after the collapse of the Soviet Union some years ago many scholars declared the coming age of international American military dominance. They even called it a Pax Americana or American peace. But just 10 years later, 9-11 shattered that illusion and shattered America to its core, shook us rather, to its core. And just as the Pax Romana and the Pax Britannica before it, the Pax Americana is coming to a swift end. Now, this is what I said several years ago. I know how powerful we are in America know what kind of military we have. 
I know that there's uh, hardly anyone who can match us. But I also know how wicked we are in America. In light of how good God has been to us. And whether you like it or not, with presidents and Supreme Court justices turning their backs on God and sanctioning homosexual marriage and homosexuality and lesbianism, unleashing wicked people upon innocent children to uh, adopt them and other such evil, not to mention the adultery and the fornication that is running rampant among heterosexuals even in the church, violence is out of control. And the greatest sin, one of the greatest sins, is how unthankful we are in America to God Almighty. As He has blessed this country more than any other country in the history of the world. Outside of Israel, there's no country that's been more blessed than Israel. I know there's some people who think that's the case. That's not the case. America would not be without Israel. I'm very sorry to burst your bubble, your American bubble. Without the Jews, my dear friends, we be nothing. I know you don't like it, but it's true. So we ought to thank God for the Jews. And yes, white folk built America. Black folks built America, Indians built America, a whole lot of folks built America. But you got to put the Jews right at the top, the Israelites. Without them, we would not have experienced the blessings we have. And yet we are unthankful. We're ungrateful. We're doing evil, flying in the face of God. The only reason why America is still existing to this day is because there's a remnant praying for America. But one day you're going to look up if we don't confess our sins and repent and stop sanctioning that which will destroy America and, and any other country. Homosexuals cannot have children, contrary to what you have heard. And so America will be destroyed if that, if that takes over. And they, there are people in that group who want to take over. They want everybody to be like that. They want everybody to be gay. So we have politicians and preachers, pastors, evangelists, who are foolishly, foolishly acquiescing and falling down to this demonic spirit that is invading America. And so don't be surprised if America is destroyed. I don't care what kind of mighty might we have. I don't care what kind of bombs we have. If you think Russia is playing with us and all the little antics that they're doing, they, they, they're testing it. They're trying to see how far you're going to go, what you got. And you know China's not playing with you. And, 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 and China might invade just to get their money. We owe them trillions. Many point to the rise of nationalism and isolation, isolationism in the U.S. as proof of this. And many are worried about who will take America's place on the world stage, if anybody. But regardless of what the future holds, we as Christians can take hope by knowing 
the Pax Christi. Now, I've never heard of the Pax Christi. My son said he made sure about it, my youngest son. Uh, the Pax Christi is coming. A reign of peace that will never come to an end. So the question for you tonight, dear friend, if you are a child of God already, if you are a Christian, are you living for him because he's coming back for you? Are you obeying him? Are you ready for the rapture of the church? Are you ready for his second coming? If he came right now, would you be ready to go? Or would he catch you doing that which is not pleasing in his sight? So the question tonight is for you, dear sinner friend, have you been born again? Have you been saved from the wrath to come? The hell to come? Don't think for one minute that God is not going to deal with people who have Flown in his face with evil, rebelliousness, stubbornness, some things that it is even hard to mention in public. God said and made it very clear. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. Don't worry about when, but I will repay. Someone said a long time ago that the will of God grinds slow, but it grinds show. And when it catches it with you, it's going to crush you. If you don't confess your sins and repent and trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And so, dear friends, if you are not a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, believing in your heart that he died for your sins, was buried, and rose on the third day, I urge you to trust him tonight. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou you shalt be saved. Believe in your heart that he died for your sins, was buried, and rose on the third day. For he is coming again, and you do not want to be left behind. Left behind. Left behind. Here is how you can place your faith and trust in him for your soul's salvation and have that taken care of tonight. And get your soul saved from sin, the power of sin, and the consequences of sin, which is hell. That can be taken care of right now tonight. You don't have to wait till Sunday morning. You need to do that tonight. You may not make it till Sunday morning. And don't tell me people are dying uh, all over the place. Black, white, red and yellow, old and young. Christian and non-Christian are dying. It's a real thing. First, dear friend, accept the fact that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's law. You have broken God's Ten Commandments. I have, the Pope has, the Dalai Lama has, Joel Osteen has. All white people have, all black people have, all red people, all yellow people, everybody, including you. You are a sinner. You're a wicked sinner, and you know it. You sin by choice, and you sin because you have a nature to sin. It's in you to sin. It's easy for you to sin. It's not hard. If it's hard for you to sin, you're probably already saved. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short 
of the glory of God. The light in the back. We all have failed God. Second, accept the fact, dear friend, that there is a penalty. There is a punishment for sin. The Bible states in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. We die because of sin. Our body goes to the grave. Our soul goes to hell if we have never trusted Christ and believed on Christ in this life. That leads me to my third point. Accept the fact right now that you are on the road to hell because Jesus Christ, the man who preached more on hell than anybody in the history of the world, Jesus Christ preached on hell. You may not hear that from preachers today, but he did. Why? Because he loves you. He was trying to warn you to escape hell by trusting him. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 10, 28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Hell is a real place. And hell is bad news. But I have some good news for you. Jesus Christ said it best in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Just believe in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in your heart that he died for your sins, was buried and rose from the dead by the power of God for you, so that you can live forever with him. Pray and ask him to come into your heart to save your soul today, and he will save your soul. Just believe on Christ. Right where you're standing, some of you are standing right now. Nobody else knows what you're doing. You have your phone up like this. And you're looking at me preach and listening to me preach. You might be at a party. You might be looking down at your phone. You might be with your girlfriend and you're looking to the side. You might be in the car listening to the live podcast. You might be in bed getting ready to go to sleep. Whatever the case, you can get saved right now. That's the power of the gospel. And that's the power of this technology that God has wrought through man. Romans 10, 9 and 13 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou you shall be saved for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes, dear friend, it is as simple as that. Yes, dear friend, it is as easy as that. It was not easy for God. It was not easy for Jesus Christ. But he made it easy for us. Why wouldn't he? Why would God make it difficult for us to be saved? When he didn't have to do it in the first place. Why would he make it difficult for ignorant, wicked, sinful people like us to get saved? He knew we would mess it up. But he also knew that we can't mess up believing in your heart on Jesus Christ. It's as simple as that. That's it. You don't have to be a church member to be saved. You don't have to go to church tomorrow to be saved. It's all good stuff. But that has nothing to do with getting saved. I got saved in a military dorm room. I was on my way to hell. Someone came and showed me what I just showed you. Uh, I got saved that night, and I have not been the same since. And I've been preaching the gospel almost since that time. You don't have to get baptized to get saved. You don't have to speak in some unknown tongue to be saved. No, you do not have to run around the church and shout. And all of that to be saved. 
All you have to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart. That he suffered and bled and died on the cross for your sins. Was buried and rose on the third day early on Sunday morning. And pray, call unto him, and call out to him and ask him to save you. That's it. Just look to Jesus. Just trust in him. He's the only somebody can save, and he'll take it from there. So repeat after me, if you're ready to be saved tonight. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Don't you worry about it. If Google can keep your information and know about all of your information and remember everything there is about you, if Facebook can know everything about you and remember the last time you was on uh, the site, the last time you bought a book and so forth and so on, if Amazon can know everything about you and your mama and where you live at and when the last time you was online and they can remember your name, your address, your telephone number and all that, God knows everything there is about you and he will hear your cry when you call on him and he will not forget. Let's pray. Believing in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he is the Lamb of God who has died and taken away the sin of the world. He was buried and rose on the third day. Repeat after me phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner, that I have done evil in your sight, for I have broken your Ten Commandments by lying, by stealing, by lusting, by disobeying and dishonoring my parents, by taking your holy name in vain, and many other sins. For Jesus Christ's sake, please have mercy and grace upon my wretched soul. Please forgive me of all of my sins, as I now believe with all of my heart on your Holy Son, Jesus Christ, who suffered and bled and died on the cross for my sins was buried and rose on the third day. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of my sins past and to turn from my evil life and to follow you in the new life. Lord Jesus. For it is in your name I pray. Amen. Now, dear friend of mine, if you just trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you have just believed on Jesus Christ with your heart, and you prayed that prayer with me, and you meant it from your heart, I declare to you, based upon the Word of God, the Holy Bible. You are now saved from hell and you are on your way to heaven. Welcome to the family of God, dear friends. Congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for your sins, was buried, and rose on the third day as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to GospelLightSociety.com and read my pamphlet titled, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Now, dear friend, until next time, God loves you, we love you, and may God bless you real good, is my prayer. Let's all stand for our closing prayer.
Holy Father God, in heaven we praise you and we thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace. We praise you and we thank you for your Holy Son, Jesus Christ, your Holy Ghost, and for what you have done here tonight, and for what you're doing and for what you will do. We know that your Holy Word does not go out void, and we pray, Lord, that you will continue to save those who are lost, revive those who are saved, glorify your holy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Amen. God bless you, dear friends. Until next time.